Hey everybody, it's Jerry here. But today I want you to come take a walk with me and uh, we're going to have a discussion about saltwater fly fishing and how to get started. Uh, this is just a discussion. Uh, we're going to be discussing rods, reels, lines used, leaders, uh, flies, that's the fun part. <laughs> and of course additional equipment you'll need to get started uh, fly fishing so let's get on the water here uh, and uh, we'll start our discussion let's start this discussion about the rod you uh, want to start with uh, the one weight that I recommend for just about uh, all saltwater fishing uh, be it uh, bass, uh, bluefish, fluke, uh, anything that swims in the salt, wheat fish, uh, sea bass, uh, anything you may pick up. It's going to be a nine weight rod. Now, I do use other outfits. Uh, the one I'm using in this video is actually a 910, and, uh, but you might want to pick out a good nine weight rod. And one thing we'll discuss later is uh, choosing lines uh, on the surf. But, uh, I would start and recommend you start with a 9 weight rod to begin with. Next we're going to discuss the reel that you can purchase to match your rod. Again, this is a dis uh, discussion about uh, the equipment uh, for most of the saltwater fishing you will be encountering on the surf, uh, just basically anywhere in the northeast, uh, north of the Carolinas, up to Maine. Uh, but you want to find a reel that's going to match your nine weight rod. So uh, there's a few things to look at. The first is going to be, of course, you want to get a reel that will handle nine weight line. But anything that will handle 8 to 10 weight will handle your 9 weight line perfectly. You can put 10 weight line on um, an 8 weight reel, so I wouldn't worry about that. You're just going to get a slightly less bit of back end, and we'll get into that. Um, when I purchase a, a, a reel, I would look at the, the cost of spare spools. As you get more advanced in your fly vision, uh, you're going to want to use different lines for different places and different reasons. So always consider the cost of spare spools before you buy your first reel and see if those spools are readily available. I'm That's uh, very important. And also, uh, as you get into different weights of line, um, you're going to be getting different rods and you can buy that same reel again. So this way you can kind of flip your spools back and forth, which we're going to discuss next is the lines. But basically those are the few things I look for in a reel for my nine weight fly rod to start off with. One reel I do recommend is the Fluger Metalist 1495. They're a time-tested design. I've used them myself and uh, they're relatively inexpensive. You can buy them used or new and uh, the same design lasted uh, many, many years. Uh, so I do recommend uh, the Fluger Metalist 1495 and one half. But the, any size between 1495 to 1498 will accommodate your saltwater fishing needs, as well as all those wonderful reels out there. But just take into consideration availability and cost of spare spools. <laughs> as you progress in your fishing, you're going to want to uh, acquire different lines and weights for different applications. And that's a very important thing to consider. I think it was Stan Bogdan that once said, uh, save uh, your money for the line. And I think his whole design into his reels was uh, based on saving money for the line, uh, as beautiful and expensive as his reels are today. But uh, when looking for line, we're working with a nine weight outfit. This may sound confusing, but I would recommend uh, getting a good 10 weight line to start off with. I can run a whole video on, on a fly fishing line. Um, but to make things simple, if you're going to get one line, I would probably recommend a sinking line. Um, and that can get confusing, but you want something that will sink uh, four to six inches per second. So, and you want to look at uh, also perhaps a weight forward. Uh, I know this sounds very confusing, but there's only a few things you look at. With a nine weight outfit, 
I would recommend using a 10 weight line, weight forward, sinking approximately 4 to 6 inches per second as one line. Of course, this discussion will go on and on and on about what's the best uh, sink rate. Uh, is a floating better than a sinking? But just think sinking, uh, just think uh, 4 to 6 inches sinking and weight forward. Um, I actually, like I said, on uh, a whole one hour long video discussing lines to use and where. But uh, these three things are the most important things to consider um, for one line. Because most of your fishing is going to be in the column and on the bottom, uh, although be it, you're going to catch a lot of fish on top too. But uh, with those heavy currents and uh, those deeper uh, holes, um, you're going to have access to more areas using a sinking uh, weight forward uh, 4 to 6 inch per second uh, sinking line. And remember, I know it sounds confusing, but uh, I would recommend uh, to start using a 10 weight line. It will make your casting a lot more controlled and easier. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about lines and what lines to pick, I know it can get confusing. Feel free to uh, message me anytime. Okay, now this is the fun part, at least. I, I think it's the fun part. We're going to discuss some of the flies um, that I use while I'm fishing. Um, there's basically just a few that you're going to use when you're out there. Uh, keep in mind the size hook ranges would be a size 2 to about a size 3.0 is the biggest I go. Um, generally to pick one size, I would say a size 1.0 is a great size to work with for all kinds of fish. But you can go up and down. But here are some of the basic flies. One of my favorite flies, probably my number one fly to use, uh, mostly for bass, uh, would be your deceiver flies. I have all different colors like the carry. Yellow is always uh, supreme and blacks at night. And of course you can't go wrong with white. Uh, another type of second fly that I like to use, these are your half and halves. They're almost like Klaus or Minnows. These are your sinking flies. Um, I did well with Charisse's, yellows, uh, reds, black tops, but I, those I keep mostly white with a sort of black for fluke. Um, and then you got your epoxy minnows. Uh, these things are fantastic. Some days, uh, the silver side epoxies, uh, they'll make or break a day when nothing else is working. The Tim Surf candies are great. Those are the ones I use. Uh, seducers are also good too. They're, they uh, whistlers, uh, whatever you want to call them. And all these flies, again, I use about a size. Uh, two O is a great size, one and whatnot, like we just, just talked about. Uh, some more of the flies that I will use. Um, these are clousers. Um, I, I like the clouser minnows as well. These are your sinking kind of flies. I'll throw them for smaller fish and smaller profiles. Um, they're almost in line with the half and halves, but I do like the half and halves better. Of course, you have uh, foam popping flies and sliders with darting and popping actions, and that's a pretty cool swim sand eel deceiver I tied on the bottom. I really, uh, I caught a few fish with that. Um, but most of the bass I catch on the surf are with the deceiver flies. So, one fly to pick a deceivers. And some additional flies, these are your spun deer hair flies, your snake flies, the tabry snake flies. I pack a few of these, and I use tracers as you see on the bottom. So this is Big yellow, or big bird, big yellow. Hey, uh, again as usual, um, it's hard to, um, each segment we're getting into, we probably can run about a one hour long video. And I'm trying to touch on the surface uh, some of the equipment and tackle that you can set up, like I set up with, uh, I would say 75% of the time to get, get going and fishing. Um, the section now on meters and uh, tippets and whatnot, um, we can discuss again uh, for a clear hour. But I'm going to say, you know, just briefly discuss a few of the basic setups. Now, one thing to consider is with a floating line, you want to use a tapered leader. I'm only going to brush briefly on tapered leaders. The reason why you want that taper is because you want to turn the fly. Uh, over correctly. You don't want your leader landing in a pile. Um, and basically you can either buy tapered leaders or you can make tapered leaders with your favorite formula. The favorite formula is making it, making your own taper with different segments of monofilament. But uh, we're talking about leaders with uh, sinking lines. So basically 
the easiest way to approach this is just use a five foot segment or I like the six foot segment if I'm in a hurry on a fast bite a six foot segment of any 30 pound monofilament uh, will work uh, ample as a leader and I've done that many times um, however I like to use uh, what I call a 50-50 um, so basically if I am looking to work with a heavy uh, leader I'll use uh, two feet of 50 pound followed by two feet of 30 pound. If there are blues around, I'll put on a shock leader, uh, perhaps 60 pound uh, fluorocarbon or regular mono or even wire. Um, if I was fishing for fluke or weak fish, I might go with a 20 pound two feet section followed by a 20 pound 10 foot section. Um, and somewhere in between even a 30, 15, 2 feet and 2 feet uh, for striped bass I found uh, gave me a more effective uh, hook set. Uh, I think it has something to do, you want to go, you, that second 2 feet section, you want it to be light enough I believe, I firmly believe so the fish can swallow it in. And when you make these leaders, use your favorite connecting knots. Um, you can look any up online. Just keep in mind, keep it simple. You can start with four to five feet of 30 pound test and you just cut your fly down. Okay, we're gonna finish off here with uh, just a few items that I like to carry with me and you probably already have. Um, generally, uh, of course, you're gonna have some, your pliers, your hook removers. Um, you just use them all the time. Or, um, I like to carry a spool of wire just in case uh, some big blues come passing through and I uh, need to wire up quick. Uh, nippers, I find them very handy for some frequently changing flies all the time. It makes it a lot easier just to change my fly with a nipper on my side rather than pull out my pliers. And most important, my hook sharpener. I believe uh, sharp hooks will make the difference in your game. Make sure you use a good sharpener. But uh, again, uh, I only had so much time to, to do this video and I wanted to show you the equipment that you uh, would need to get started uh, saltwater fly fishing here in the northeast for these type of fish. And I uh, would like to take the time now to thank you for watching. Um, please like, dislike, comment. You know I love all your comments and keep in mind if you have any questions about any of the items we discussed I had a very short time to to uh, discuss this. I just want to introduce you. This is more of an introduction to the equipment um, uh, that we use fly fishing. But again, um, subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you next time. And thanks again for watching. Oh my goodness, almost forgot. And remember, fish your way. <laughs> thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. If you follow my videos, you know I've been dropping uh, some bonus footage at the end and I uh, didn't touch on the bucket. Um, these things are great uh, many days. Um, I only I use one if I feel I have to and there are certain times where they will help you manage your line. So I look to use one on windy days, rough surf, or wading in current. It does help to get you those extra yards that you may need. Um, you can get them for a few bucks at Walmart or your favorite store. Um, it is just a plain old dish pan. Uh, I think this one cost me two dollars at most. You get them at the dollar store for a buck. You punch a couple holes in it and drop a bungee on. You're good to go. Or steal one from your wife or your mom and uh, punch a couple holes on it. Get out on the surf and you're ready to fish. But uh, the buckets are great uh, when you need them. <laughs> Thanks again for watching.